welcome amazing friends and let's solve this cambridge interview test together i tell you this question is tricky okay when you look at it you can easily say that um since the paths are the same automatically the basis should be equal okay now someone can easily get the value of x someone can say it's 10 and the rest of them but let me tell you that you are right but that your solution is not complete and i'm going to tell you why okay when you look at this you observe that this expression inside is raised to the power of four so what this means that we call this kind of equation aquatic equation okay so what it means is that we are expected to get four solutions or four values of s yes four values of s now i'm going to teach you how to solve this kind of question each time you see it in exam okay so we're going to begin this with solution okay now remember it's just very simple so relax okay now to answer this what do you do we are going to have it that just remember this rule that when you have a to the power of m to the power of n it is the same as a to the power multiply this it gives you mn now to answer this we can write this to be x minus 3 raised to power of 2 then raised to power of 2 did you observe anything if you multiply these two following this it will return you to 4 is equal to this 7 okay you can still rewrite this to be 7 squared raised to the power of 2 if you expand multiply the powers following this it gives you 4 we are doing it to simplify it okay so what do you do again this gives us x minus 3 all to the power of 2 raised to the power of 2 then this because it's positive we are taking it to this side so it's going to be negative so we have 7 squared all to the power of 2 is equal to remember what to be left is 0 interesting now let me remind you of what you are going to do here remember your difference of two squares because when you look at this this one this value is raised to the power of 2 and this is also raised to the power of 2. The sign in between is subtraction. So remember this rule. a squared minus b squared is a plus b into a minus b. Now, how do we apply it here? This value inside the bracket is going to serve as a. Then this one is going to serve as b. Okay? So to answer this now, we're going to have it as this will give, it, will give us x minus 3 to the power of 2 which is our a then plus our b is 7 to the power of 2 so we have 7 to the power of 2 i hope you are with me there then open another bracket for this your a is x minus 3 all squared okay then bring down your subtraction sign your b is 7 squared did you see what we're doing everything is equal to zero we are reducing it now what do you do again when you look at this you just need to simplify and to do that we are going to have it that for this for expanding this you know this is s minus 3 all raised to power of 2 to expand this just use your binomial expansion formula which says when you have when you have a minus b raised to power of 2 it is the same as a will be raised to power 2 use 2 to multiply this 2 with the sign it will be negative 2ab then square your b okay now we're going to apply this here for this for this okay now in that case we are going to have this is going to take the value of a this will be your b so using this formula here we are going to now have x will be squared okay then minus 2ab means 2 multiply your a is x and your b is 3. I hope you are seeing what we are doing. If you multiply this, it gives you 6x. So we are going to have 6x here. Then plus our b is 3. So we are having 3 squared is 3 times 3, giving us 9. Okay, so for expanding this with this power, we got this. Okay, then mine plus this 7 squared means 7 multiplied by 7 which will give us 49 okay that is for the first bracket now for the second bracket we're having 
expand this, okay? So if you do that, we are going to have obeying the same process. This is giving us x squared minus 6x, I hope you are with me, plus 9, okay? Then minus 7 squared, we said, is 49. Everything is equal to 0. Now, what do you do again? You keep simplifying it. So we're going to now have x squared minus 6x. If you add this up, it gives us 58. Then close the bracket. Then you have this also as x squared minus 6x. Subtract this, it gives us negative 40. Everything is equal to 0. Now, you observe that these two are multiplying. And when you have a, b to be equal to 0, it means that either a is equal to 0 or that b is equal to 0. So what it means here is that from here, it means that either x squared minus 6x plus 58 is equal to 0 or the second equation or the second expression, which is x squared minus 6x minus 40 is equal to 0. Now, when you look at this, this is what we call quadratic equation because the highest power of x here is 2. So you have noticed we have two quadratic equations to solve. And let me show you how to solve them. Now, solving the first equation, let's solve the first one, okay? So this is going to give us what we have there is x squared minus 6x plus 58 is equal to 0. We are going to use the formula method, okay? And in that formula method, our x is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, using this formula, your a is always the coefficient of x squared. So our a here is going to be 1. The coefficient of x squared here is 1, okay? Then our b is going to be the coefficient of x and the coefficient of x here is negative 6. Then our c is the constant. The constant is that one without variable. So we have it as 58. Amazing. Now let's plug this into this. So we're going to now have x is equal to, bring down this negative sign. Your b is negative 6. So put it in brackets. Okay. Then we have plus or minus square root of, your b is negative 6. Square it minus 4a, our a is 1, okay? Then our c is 58, all divided by 2 multiplied by 1. So from here, we're going to have it that our x is equal to, multiply negative multiplies negative is positive. So we have positive 6. This will give us square root of negative c squared. The square will affect the negative, it will be positive now, okay? So we're going to have 36. Then multiply this is going to give us negative 232, okay? All divided by, multiply this, you have 2. Amazing. Now what do you do again? X is giving us 6 plus or minus square root of, then let's subtract this. If you subtract this, it's going to give us a negative 196, okay? All divided by 2. Now, you observe here that there is a negative sign inside the square root. And whenever you have a negative sign inside the square root, what it means is that that value is no longer a real number. Okay? It cannot be found on a number line. So what it means is that this solution is leading us to a complex solution. Now, let's see to that. So remember that if this can also be written, so we have x is equal to, 6, so we have x is equal to 6 plus or minus square root of, we can rewrite this to be negative 1 multiplied by 196. Did you see that? And that is, remember, this is going to give us all divided by 2. I hope you are seeing what we are doing. So we're going to now have x is equal to 6 plus or minus. Now remember your rule, okay? Let's remember this that whenever we have square root of a, b, it is always square root of a multiplied by root b. So if you apply this here, we are going to have x is equal to, so this is giving us as x equal to 6 plus or minus square root of negative 1, okay? 
multiply by root 196. I hope you are with me there. So we can take this off. All divided by 2. Now, what do you do now? This i, this negative one that has a square root, it is an imaginary unit which we use i to represent. Okay? So in that case, we are going to have, so we have it that, just remember that i is represented with square root of negative 1. So if you substitute it here, we are going to have our x is equal to 6 plus or minus. This will take the shape of i, okay? Now, square root of 196 is going to give us uh, 14. I hope you are with me. So all divided by 2. So simplify it. We are going to have x is equal to 6 divided by 2 plus or minus 14i divided by 2. You see how we are reducing it. So we are going to now have x is equal to, divide this, it gives you 3, plus or minus, divide this, it gives you 7i. Did you see that? So what it means is that we are going to have x is equal to 3 plus 7i, okay? Then we also have x is equal to 3 minus 7i. Did you see we have gotten two solutions here? And these two solutions we got are the complex solution because it has a real number, 3, and an imaginary number, 7i. So this is a complex solution. Now let's solve the second equation. For the second equation, we have it that x squared minus 6x minus 40 is equal to 0. Okay, let's still use our formula. So we're going to have, we have it as minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so our a here is 1. Our b is the coefficient of this. Our c is negative 40. Now to solve, we have x is equal to negative of negative 6 plus or minus square root of, this will give us negative 6 squared minus 4 multiplied by our a is 1 and our c is negative 40, all divided by 2 multiplied by our a is 1. Interesting. So what do you do? We have x is equal to, this will give us 6 plus or minus square root of, this will give us 36 minus if you multiply this, negative multiplied negative is positive. And when you multiply this, it gives you 160. I hope you are with me. All divided, multiply this, it gives you 2. So this is giving us x is equal to 6 plus or minus. If you add this, it's going to give us square root of 196 divided by 2. There is no negative sign inside this. So this one is leading us to a real solution meaning we can find its value on a number line. Simplifying this, this is going to giving us x. So we have x is equal to 6 plus or minus. Square root of this, like we know, is, is 14. So we have 14 all over 2, okay? And this is giving us 6 plus or minus. So we can have 6 over 2, then plus or minus 14 over 2. So if you simplify, x is giving you this, we cancel, we have 3 plus or minus, this will give us 7. Did you see that? So what it means is that our x is giving us 3 plus 7, and when you add 3 plus 7, it gives you 10. So it means that x is equal to 10. This is another solution, okay? So we can call this one here solution 1. This one is solution 2. And this is solution three. Did you see that? So we also have it that x, we also have it that x is equal to three minus seven. And when you subtract this, it gives you negative four. Did you see it? So meaning that our x, this fourth solution is negative four. Did you see that? So we've been able to have four solutions, the first, second, now, these last two we got are real solutions, like we said, because they are to be found on a number line. Now, we're going to do a check. I'm going to check for one real and one complex. Then I'll leave you with the remaining. So we begin with the real. I will check for when x is 10. So let's do a check, okay, for when x is 10. Put the value of x here. 
we are going to have 10 minus 3 to the power of 4. Is it the same as 7 to the power of 4? If you subtract this, it will give us 7 to the power of 4 and it's the same. So you see that this is correct. Okay. Now let me quickly check for when it is negative 4. So we have when x is negative 4, you are going to have 10. Okay, well, x is going to be negative 4. So we have negative 4 minus 3 to the power of 4. Is it the same thing as 7 to the power of 4? If you subtract this, this is giving us negative 7 to the power of 4. Is it the same thing as 7 to the power of 4? Now, because the power is even, 4 is an even number. When you raise it, this number that is negative to a power of even number, the negative sign inside the bracket turns to positive. I hope that is clear. So in that case, this is the same thing as 7 to the power of 4, and it's the same as 7 to the power of 4. Did you see that? This is also correct. So these two solutions for the real are correct. So for the complex, we check for this. Okay, so let's do it here. So we're going to check from when x is equal to 3 plus 7i. Now let's put this value of x here. This is giving us x is now 3 plus 7i minus this 3 raised to the power of 4. Is it the same as 7 to the power of 4? Let's see to that. Now this, these two are real, okay? So you can subtract them. So 3 minus 3 will give you 0 is off. So it's giving us 7 to the 7i raised to the power of 4. Is it the same thing as 7 to the power of 4? Now we can take this off. So what are we concluding? You will observe that. Remember we said that i, this i, is the same as root negative 1. I hope you know that. So when you have i squared, i squared will be square of this, which will give you negative 1. Did you see that? Now, what does it mean? It means also that if you have i to the power of 4, because when you simplify this, you are going to have, this will give you 7 to the power of 4, then this i will also be raised to the power of 4. This is what this means. I hope you are with me. So when you have i to the power of 4, it is the same as i, it is the same as i squared raised to power of 2. And that will give us negative 1 raised to power of 2. And that is 1. Did you see something? Now, what it means here is that when you have this, it is the same as 7 to the power of 4. This we take the shape of 1. Okay? And when you multiply this, it gives you 7 to the power of 4. Did you see that? So simplifying the left side here also gives us 7 to the power of 4, which we have at the right side. So you see that this is correct. That means this value of x is correct. So what is our conclusion? Our conclusion is that, so let's make our conclusion. Our conclusion is that the values of x are 10, the second value is negative 4, the third value of x is 3 plus 7i, and the fourth value of x is 3 minus 7i. And these are the four solutions for this uh, question. And I hope you really learned a lot. Let's know how much this has helped you in the comment section. Remember, sharing this will help more people to learn the skills we display. Don't forget to subscribe for the more tips. And don't forget to give this tutorial a thumbs up. I'll see you in our next class to discuss more. Till then.